Okay, so we're here on the very last day of DrupalCon at one of the uh, code sprints, the contribution sprints. I'm here with Dries, and you started Drupal back in 2001 and have uh, continued to be the uh, project lead um, ever since. And um, I've just got a few questions for you that are not of such a technical nature. Um, so uh, you're actually originally from Belgium and you moved over to the States uh, a couple of years ago. What is it about the States that makes it more an environment that uh, is suited to you? Yeah, so I started the Drupal project when I was in Belgium. Uh, and so generally speaking, I think innovation can happen everywhere in the world, whether it's yeah. in the US or in you know, Europe or you know, anywhere. Yeah. Um, the reason I moved was for Acquia. And um, I think while innovation can happen everywhere, yeah. um, building bigger companies um, you know, is more beneficial in the US. And the primary reason is because um, there's less, you have to deal less with language barriers yeah. and you get access to a bigger target market and as well as bigger websites in our case. And so for me that was a, an easy choice because you know Drupal predated Acquia by seven years and so we could just look at the data and the nature of our business was that we wanted to work with the biggest Drupal sites and, and provide them you know products and services. and. Looking at the data, it was clear that the biggest Drupal sites were in the United States. Okay. So do you think that has something to do with also with the nature of Drupal itself, or is it mostly to do with the regulatory environment? Um, no, I think, there's, I think there's a lot of factors. Obviously, there's a lot more people in the yeah. United States, yeah. and therefore the websites in the United States have a bigger audience, so they're more, you know, bigger in terms of volume and traffic. Um, but there's also bigger businesses in the United States, and these these organizations, they need you know more complex websites at, at bigger scale, and so um, I think it's a combination of these these two things. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think there are things that could be done, say, in Europe, that would make more of a favorable environment for people like you? Because you've um, you've won a, awards from uh, Business Week and from the MIT uh, Technology mm -hmm. Review, and. You're a true young innovator, and um, is there something about the environment in the States that makes it more of a fertile ground for people like you? Um, well, I think there's a lot of different things that, that can be done. Um, I would say I think the biggest thing, it's more, is, um, is almost a state of mind. I, you know, I believe there is a state of mind in the United States of bringing the best people together and thinking big and, and starting a company together. Yeah. Um, and then also, for example, there's the American dream, right? Which is also, it's not nothing to do with regulation, but it's kind of a state of mind that basically allows people to go after something. And then if you're successful, that's actually a success story. And that's actually rewarded also financially. Yeah. And so there's this bigger thing of like, everybody can go after his American dream um, and do really well for himself and, and for all of their employees. Yeah. And I feel like in Europe, that's often kind of like, you know, it's not that well received always. If you're successful, people are tend to be, you know, a little bit more jealous or suspicious or, or you know, some, yeah. something along those lines. So I think a lot of it is, is actually cultural yeah. from, um, you know, and of course, there is also more like, you know, um, there, I mean, there's many other things that, that, that governments can do. Um, and I find in general, I find that in Europe, governments try to be um, too involved. Okay. Uh, I'd love for governments to, to be a little bit less involved and sort of kind of like letting things happen. Yeah. And, and fewer rules is better than more rules. Yeah. Was the environment that you experienced, was it the Uni University of Antwerp, I think, I was, yeah, when I, you created uh, yes. Drupal for the first time? Did you feel a sense of freedom there at university? Or was, was that in some way fostered or was that just something you did in your spare time? It wasn't really fostered back in the day, I think. Um, I, I did it in my spare time. Um, in my spare time, I worked on, on open source and, um, and I like building websites. It's just something that I did in my spare time. I think nowadays, a lot of the universities in Belgium, they're much more proactive around courses that you know, teach entrepreneurship, which when I was at the university, you know, in the computer science track, um, that just didn't exist for us. Yeah. So I think universities have gone much better. Okay. Nice. Um, so um, maybe moving on from that topic around innovation, uh, something that's relevant to Drupal shops around the world. 
Uh, here, this is my first DrupalCon and I've really experienced the enthusiasm and passion that people have around Drupal and uh, I think it's really true what people say about the community um, being really the backbone of what Drupal is about. When we get back home and we're at work and we have to convince other people, maybe the customers, about what's so great about Drupal and when they're perhaps mostly just interested in having a great website. How do you think we strike the? How should we strike the balance between letting this passion and enthusiasm shine through, without boring the customer too much with the technological details? Right. I think at the end of the day, a lot of customers that don't know Drupal, they're looking for a solution, and first and foremost, they look for. That means a technical solution, like we need to have the right features, we need to have the right functionality, um, and you know that. A lot of them initially don't care at all whether there is a community or not. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think you do bring up the community though, and I think the way you, you bring that to your customers is by explaining the benefits of the community, not the fact that there is a community. I mean, you mentioned that as well, but I think that the benefits is the, the rapid pace of innovation, right? The fact that we have so many modules built by the community, and that for the customer means a lot of different things. It allows them to build websites which are state of the art, they can innovate, they can experiment with their websites and that's that's the real benefit of the community okay. to customers that are new to Drupal. Yeah. Once they mature in their you know, sort of Drupal life, if you yeah. will, yeah. then I think the other benefits are you know, becoming more apparent yeah. and then they, they see the benefit of actually being part of the community and, and also contributing back. Yeah. But okay. I wouldn't lead with those benefits myself because yeah. um, you know you kind of have to get into the community step by step. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I'm hearing and what I've learned quite a bit from the DrupalCon is that there are real tangible benefits to being part of an open source community. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to what you were saying in your keynote about doing well and also doing good. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you? So, so when you first started with Drupal and you made it open source, is that something that you had in mind then or is it something that you've learned along the way? No, yeah. When I started with Drupal and I made it available as open source, so it's primarily because um, other people wanted... So I used Drupal as an experimental platform to, you know, back in the day, yeah. to sort of explore different web technologies. Yeah. And other people, and I would blog about it, and other people would, you know, give me feedback and suggestions. And, and so I made it av available so other people could use you know my software as their own experimental platform and so there was no do well do good kind of you know uh, mentality there and so i've learned that along the way and i've kind of tried to make it sort of a, a central theme uh, for many different things that i do including Malum as an example you know i feel like with Malum we've, we've built a small startup which is successful and it's a profitable company so we do well financially um, but we also do good because we help you know eliminate hundreds of millions of spam messages you know across many many websites and and we do so by giving away a lot of the software for free like 95 percent and more of our install base gets to use model for free and so that's kind of the do good part helping to make the web a little bit better by fighting spammers yeah and that's a really important uh, Part of it because there are a lot of websites where if you can't get rid of the spam, they're pretty much dead yeah. on this. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was really interesting. Uh, I'll let you get back and continue doing well and continue right. doing good. Yeah. Thank you. Because <laughs> yeah, it's taking part in the coast. And thanks awesome. very much for your time. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks.